because there are once again some really good Friday night games. I yes, mean, it is. This, I like this. I like we saw last week. We saw the two Kansas teams playing. Uh, by the way, what what what, what about UNLV? I mean, we were we were loving last year the, the ascent with the program, and I you know we updated them every week. Hey, another win by UNLV, and uh, they uh, they they finally kind of lost their gas in the championship game against Boise. But Odom, the head coach, he promised we're going to be better defensively. We're going to be better, more physical because that's Boise, and that's the level we need to get to. And sure enough. They're de- they're they're playing some really good defense. They have some really good, solid defensive players that are pro prospects, and they've got a pretty decent offense. Even their quarterback, again, that's an FCS quarterback that has a lot of uh, production on that level. That's done a really good job in his first year there. So, gotta love the the, the job UNLV has done uh, going into Kansas, even though it's not their regular home stadium. We got to keep that in mind. That is uh, their uh, that's that's a stadium that that's a soccer stadium they played in. They're going to be playing in Arrowhead uh, for the majority of their home games this year because they're renovating their new home stadium with a regular home stadium. So just keep that in mind, even though, of course, there's still going to be a lot of Kansas fans there. But a uh, big win for UNLV last week and another huge win by Kansas State just hammering Arizona, too. Yeah, the K-Boys uh, got the job done. And uh, you take a look at – we talked a little bit about it last week about why – and it's largely because of the head coaching. It's the head coaching for not only Kansas and Kansas State with Lance Leipold and uh, uh, Chris Kleiman, but also UNLV. Uh, they're, they're peaking or surging right now, largely because of Barry Odom. He's the guy that's behind the ship. He's steering the ship. You can forget the acronym, the letters UNLV. This is a football team that's for real this year, Greg, out to a perfect start, UNLV. And we will indeed be seeing them playing in a bowl game this year. You know, it's interesting is that a lot of, and I, and I think it uh, might have been, I don't know, Tony or Andy, uh, Tony Mejia, Andy Isco, uh, one of them referenced that, well, he's not going to be here to enjoy it because Barry Oda won't be here with log. You know, he'll be somewhere uh, back in the uh, maybe SEC next year. I don't know about that because I think we're going to find out exactly how much money UNLV has because I believe UNLV can be the next Boise. I mean, as a kid, who wanted would who wouldn't want to play football in UNLV? Who wouldn't want to live there? I mean, that to me, I think that'd be a a really great destination for a lot of young kids. So it's interesting to find out: Does the program have the money? Do they have one of those really big boosters, uh, you know, that can come out of nowhere and say, "Yeah, I'll, I'll slap uh, X amount of dollars to that uh, NIL fund and make sure that you guys can pay for the players and you pay the coach." So I think that's going to be interesting because if, if Odom leaves, then obviously that's a bad sign. That's a sign that that program is probably just never going to get it done. Yeah, they're going to go, have to go back to rebuilding again if he leaves. So I can see them doing a lot what they did with Jerry Tarkany, and that's finding the money, paying the man the yeah. money. Uh, and there's money in Vegas, uh, whether it be boosters, alum, uh, you know, casino owners. Uh, you know, you get the uh, Steve Wins of the world, and uh, uh, even the guy that owns a circus sports book back behind a, a, a college football program like that. I think UNLV is here to stay. Uh, they are one of the Mountain West teams who I feel, Greg, you watch and see when this new Pac-2 expands. Uh, they need, I think, six more teams. They've got uh, four, four so far. They need, I think, six more to become a Pac-12. I believe UNLV will be one of those teams. Yeah, it'd be a shock if they weren't. I mean, yes. just shocked based on what's going on. A couple of years ago, we would have said, well, that's like Temple. But yes. now it's obvious. And, and you, know, you, you hit it on the head. I mean, if you're one of these casino owners, why wouldn't you want to put, put some money into the NIL fund? Because all of that's great business for them. The more you attract people to – because everybody knows pretty much you could do what you could do with the Raiders. I mean, there's only so much you can do. They're sold out, I'm sure. And, and, and uh, I know Mark Davis has done an incredible job as an owner. I know they haven't won yet. But business-wise, he is a better business owner than his father was. His father was an excellent head coach and an excellent um, administrator and a great NFL man. But he was not a very good business owner, uh, revenue, money-wise. Uh, his son, Mark, is a great business owner. He's done a great job with the Raiders. 
Uh, but now that's what they need at UNLV. And I think that's a great opportunity for these casino owners to say, hey, man, come on. I'll, I'll put some money in. Let's get more fans to attend games and more more, more, more people to come to UNLV to watch games. And then uh, the next day they can go out and they can come over to our casino. And, and it's, a per- it's a perfect marriage. There's no doubt about that. And uh, I just think it's only inevitable. You know, time will tell, but we're going to see that happen, I'm sure. All right, now let's talk about the games on Friday. There are three of them, Stanford's at Syracuse. I'm actually a little bit surprised that line is as low as it is. They're giving some good respect to Stanford, but Syracuse is uh, off to a really nice start as well. So that, it'll be interesting, a good, a good uh, tell on Stanford on whether or not uh, they're actually uh, improving. And it's their ACC opener. Uh, but the other two games that are really the ones to watch uh, are going to be San Jose State at Washington State and then Illinois at Nebraska. And it's interesting because these are two of the games that I like actually the, pretty much the most in college football this week. So uh, I'm going to know uh, right away on a Friday night how my weekend might go. And we'll, we'll start chronologically with that Illinois game, Mark, uh, which is a, a Big Ten opener. And uh, yeah, this is one that I really uh, fell in love with a ton of the trends that favor Illinois in this game that I was able to get right here from the playbook magazine. Uh, you can order this still. It's not too late. There's only been a couple of games in the NFL and college football, lots of games to handicap. Uh, it just is a ton of really good trends siding with Illinois in this game. How about this one? This is, this is probably the biggest one. Uh, Brett Bielema is nine and zero as a big 10 road dog of two or more points uh and that includes five straight up wins five and four straight up nine and oh against the spread uh and 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 i think this is with illinois but the fact is that bielema is awesome in this spot i've got a few others i'm gonna throw in there uh, but that's a really good one, and it's a big one. And as much as I like Nebraska, and I think they're they're definitely a team that that's that's they should be given their due. They're off to a nice start. Everybody trusts that Matt Rule's got this team heading in the right direction. I think Illinois is going to be a lot tougher than people think on Friday night. Well, they're a top twenty-five team, Greg. Uh, they made it into the polls this week, so kudos to them. They're being noticed. There's no question about that. And I believe that stat is. Uh, with Illinois because Bielema was with Wisconsin and he would have been in that role more times than just eight or nine times, uh, especially against and amongst the big boys. But it, it is what it is. Illinois is really a team on the rise right now. And we've talked before in the past about this as being Matt Rule's year, uh, you know, year two at the program. He really, they bound with success and we're seeing it from Nebraska here this year. I find it very difficult to step in front of that golden rule, if you will. I know this is a sneaky good Illinois football team, but The other part of the equation is this. When teams enter into the top 25 for the first time in eons, they oftentimes take a step and go backwards and fall out the following week. It's probably due to a champagne high, which they experience in a role like that. So uh, as much as uh, these good numbers are there for Illinois, I'm still going to acknowledge Matt Rule and the role that he's in. I'm going to lead small to Nebraska. Yeah, a couple of others here. The uh, road dog in this series is 4-1 and straight up. And against the spread over the last five years, uh, Belima, uh, actually, uh, also, if you just take a look at this year, uh, both teams, 3-0 and straight up. Uh, both teams have not lost a cover, so they're both off to really good starts. Uh, but they're also stepping up in competition for the first time. Well, Illinois had Kansas, so that was a really impressive win, uh, beating Kansas as, a, I think, was it, a touchdown dog at home a couple of weeks ago. So that's nice. Nebraska's toughest game was against Colorado and they handled them easily. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, uh, Nebraska uh, just one and 11 against the spread when they take on an opponent with revenge, Nebraska beat Illinois last year. But again, the road dog has really done well besides trends. I'm going to bring up one more thing before we move on. And that is, uh, as much as this kid, this freshman quarterback from Nebraska, this Rayola kid, uh, has looked good so far, uh, he's going to have an excellent future. Let's keep in mind that he still has not faced a defensive team uh, and a team that is uh, ready, a Big Ten type atmosphere. I know it's in Nebraska, but Big Ten type of defense and scheme. And and that's going to be, I think, a little bit of a wake-up call. And, and I'm going to be very interested and how he performs, how he, because ha- he's got to step it up now 
And this is going to be a tough matchup for him. Well, it's good. He has to step it up, and he doesn't have to go right into the deep end of the pool. Not against uh, you know an Ohio State or a Michigan. He's got a mid run junior uh, to do that with. And if I recall, Rayola, you can correct me if I'm wrong. He was one of the most heavily recruited freshmen in the country as far as the transfer portal was concerned. Yeah, I think he committed one or two or three times to different schools and pulled back out, and ended up settling at Nebraska. Now I don't know what all the reasons were. But most likely money. But he sure does look like to be the freshman of the year as far as transfer portal quarterbacks are concerned. Well, it was beneficial that uh, his uncle uh, is coaching with the program. And his dad, of course, is a legend with the program. But like you said, he was still thinking of going somewhere. And one of those places that he actually looked like he was going to was Georgia. So there you go. Yep. they were able to bring him back. And uh, so, and, and I think he wanted to be there anyway. You're talking about a Nebraska kid. I mean, this is again, it's, it's, it's in his blood, it's in his family. Um, but I'm sure he just needed a little bit of, you know, a little bit of, of confidence that, you know, Matt Rule or whoever's here is going to turn this help, turn, help. I can't do it all. I need a head coach that I'm confident is going to help me turn this program around. And that was probably the last, uh, you know, bit Deciding of information point. that he needed. Yes. All right, so the other game uh, is San Jose State and Washington State, and this is a uh, uh, you know this is one of those uh, sandwich games for the Cougars. They played the Apple Cup last week, and now they and next week they're they're going up against Boise State. Here they get San Jose State. You know, yeah, they're out west. They know, they're familiar with the program, but it's San Jose State. It's uh, Boise's more that's the team, um, but so far San Jose State. Uh, uh, in uh, under the, uh, the former Navy head coach, uh, is yeah, really, yes, yes, uh, is off to a nice start. Uh, he had a very successful career, by the way. Um, and we met, we talked about this as well on, on, on your show. I think this is also going to be very important to note, and that is that San Jose State's quarterback, Emmett Brown, was a Washington State player, he transferred to San Jose State, and they uh, brought in a new offensive coordinator. The offensive coordinator was an assistant with Washington State uh, just a few years ago. Now he's running that same type of offense that Washington State ran a few years back, that uh, that spread. They call it the spread and shed offense. So they're throwing the ball a lot. Uh, he's uh, right now averaging 305 yards a game passing. Uh, and, you know, Washington State's also going to throw the football. Um, but I think this is also important. That is, this is the first time that Washington State is a favorite versus SB, FBS competition this year. So they've been the dog. They've been winning as a dog the first couple of games, Texas Tech and Washington. Now they're in that expected role, not only as a favorite, but they're taking on a team that they're a double-digit favorite. And I think that there'll be a little bit of a uh, hangover there. And I expect San Jose State to give him a heck of a game. Uh, and, there's, and, and, and 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 I'm going to wait for you to uh, fill in your side there because there's also a couple of excellent trends at side with the Spartans as well. Well, I'll fill in a few blanks here in this football game, uh, Greg, and I'm sure the bottom line is we're going to see this team on your double-digit upset list near, at the end of the show. Oh, yeah. San Jose State is for real, guys. Uh, here's a football team that not only has gotten out to a 3-0 and start, They've won the yards in every football game they've played, which means that they've earned what they've uh, what they've uh, earned, what, what the record says that they've earned. They can play. This football program can. Now they're going to catch Washington State off of what? A huge upset double revenge win over Washington in an Apple Cup football game, no less. So now Washington State has to get their feet back on the ground, lay double digits this uprising San Jose football team who's going to make a lot of noise this football season here, and I'm with you. I love the points in the football game, and you're going to hear me acknowledge that if you are going to use them as a double-digit surprise upset winner, I'll back you 100%. Yeah, that's definitely one that is under consideration for me, no question about it. By the way, San Jose State, 15-2-1 against the spread in regular season games, coming off a double-digit spread win. They're 1-0 in that spot this year, and they're 16-6-1 against the spread as a road dog in their last 23 games. And they're one and oh, and at this year. And uh, that's been since 2018. So you've got some really good trends. Uh, you also have the potential hangover sandwich uh, game and 
you've also got the uh, quarterback at Washington State that is trying uh, to play against his former team and show them up, uh, show them what they missed. So uh, should be either way. I think it'll be a really uh, should be a really entertaining game. You know, if you put tape over the names of these teams, and I keep saying that, Greg, a tape job. Forget their name is San Jose State. Forget they're playing Washington State. You just look at their, their body of work thus far this football season. Here, you would insist San Jose State might be the favorite in the football game. Uh, and, you know, all their head coach, he's not going to have a problem getting this football team up. Believe me, that speech about no one believes in us, uh, he's got that down pat, and they'll be hearing it this Friday, and I think it'll work wonders for this program. 